Hi, this Web 180 podcast is designed to show you how to create a website on a remote server. And then once we've done that, how to connect to that web server and look at your project or your website. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select File, New Website, FTP, 198.86.244.3 slash web 180. Once it tries attaching to the FTP server, it's going to need my credentials. And again, this information has been shown to you how this is calculated. So I'm going to put in my credentials, which is going to automatically tell the server where my uh, file should go. Once all the files have been created, you'll see the list of files created in the Solution Explorer, and it'll open up automatically the default.aspects page. Once you have created a uh, solution, let me go ahead and close this out. To get back to that same FTP site, you simply open website, put your IP address in, port number should be left alone at 21, directory is web 180, passive mode is dependent on your network connection, but if it worked once, it'll work again. Put in your credentials. FTP site is selected. We click open. Again, we're just waiting for all the files to be looked at and to make sure that everything is in order on the remote site. Once we have the project open, we can simply start working on our files and making things happen. In this case, I want to look at this in design mode. And there we go. Keep in mind that if I run this as um, a web page and I want to do a view in uh, the web page, one thing I have to make sure of, especially for me as I'm bouncing around from student website to student website, is to make sure my start options are correct. In this case, the start options aren't even set. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put those in. And I'm going to go ahead and put our server, JQ Public, which is my student account, Web 180. And that's my root of my 180 website. Now, when I do a view and browser, boom. And there's my web page. So everything is working just fine. Well, hopefully this will give you some ideas about how to work in the Visual Studio environment and our student server. For now, it'll be okay to work on the remote server directly. That is not the preferred way to work with 
uh, websites, especially if they're active webs websites. However, keep in mind that as we go down this path of enlightenment, when we get to database operations, it'll be better to get used to developing on your local server or your local system and then copying it to the student server. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. This has been Mike Shore from the Web Technologies Department.